Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the blog number two. This is where we're going to take a behind the scenes look at the creation of the book, The More Wolf, and what it is that I have been up to on this journey during the week. I have to confess, I had one of those weeks where I just thought, Ooh, I haven't really achieved that much. But when you start to get into the skin of it, peel the layers away, I was pleasantly surprised with how much I have actually achieved. So let's get going. I've got my notes here. Okay, so what have I been focused in on? What I've done and I found very useful, very helpful, is that I have created a file in Google, in my Google Drive. And within that file, I have created a document. Now, the document, so the first step was I mapped out all of the different chapters onto sticky notes, moved things around, got things in the order that it is that I wanted to get them in. So next, of course, you have to write the content. <laughs> the hard bit, the content. <laughs> so what I've done now is I've created a Word document in Google. On that document, what I've done is I've got the different headings of the chapters, and then underneath the headings of the chapters, I've got the sections it is that I want to focus in writing on. So I've got all of this, all of the book outline structured into a Google document. And then what I've done is I've created individual documents for each section. So I can put in my research, I can write that chapter, that segment. And what I've done is I've taken the link and I've copied and pasted that into the main document. So I have a central document that I can use when I want to dip into different chapters of the book quickly. It also means as well that when an editor comes to go through the book and I don't know what they do, I don't know what editors do, but bring it all together, spell check it. It's definitely going to need spell checking considering I am uh, dyslexic. It's going to need someone who is used to working with a dyslexic and how they write and how they think and how they process. So yeah, so everything is nicely set up so I can work on all of the different sections and find things easily because there's nothing worse than having a ton of WordPress documents and not being able to connect them together. Sometimes things can be a little bit um, too disconnected. So this is a great way of organizing the production of a book, bringing it together, getting all your thoughts together. So that's the first thing that I have worked on is structuring the outline of the book, creating that Google document, linking all of the other documents it is that I am creating and linking that into the main document. Brilliant, brilliant way to work. I might use it actually in other ways that I work as well now that it's the first time I've done it and discovered it. Brilliant. I have also uploaded two new videos into Rev and oh God, this saved so much time, money and energy because you can upload your videos into Rev and then what that does is it creates a transcript of the video. So I can create my videos and then I can take out the transcript. I can rewrite it, reshape it, I can use it for social media, I can use the content for a book. What I'll do is I'll leave that link below because it's a very, very helpful tool, cost effective. I think for 40 minutes of video, so two 20 minute videos, it cost me $12, which is what, about £8.99 in sterling. So absolute bargain i'll leave that link below because that's a very handy tool and it's a very way very good way to market content if you've got old videos you can get them transcribed and then you can use that copy on social in your email campaigns however it is that you want to use it but very helpful when you are writing the book because <laughs> then you can go freestyle and then 
transcribed and you can use the copy multiple different ways, which is awesome. I hit a roadblock. Well, not really a roadblock, a bit of a uh, trigger. Um, and I'm going to go into more about how you can deal with triggers, emotional triggers in the book, how you can navigate them, bypass them, you know, let whatever it is that's playing out go. That's the purpose of the book is to help you to get out of your own way. So if I can't get out of my own way, I'm in a serious amount of trouble. And that won't be really authentic, would it? So let me just have a look at my notes to see what I've got here. One of the strategies that I'm going to teach you that I have been using for, God, 20 plus years, that is to really connect with the different elements of my personality. Now, you may have heard people speaking about their inner child before. I'm going to share with you an exercise that you can use to self-coach, to connect with your inner child, to comfort her to make sure that she feels safe. I'm also going to talk about this in the book as well, is that in my experience, what tends to happen is, is that you can have something that ha that's happened in life that has been a negative experience. So maybe you had the experience as a young child or a young woman, and you're now suffering the consequences of it as an older woman. Midlife woman, I think I'm going to put myself in that bracket. <laughs> so something has been playing out for me, and I've been trying to figure out why I'm still, why it's still playing out. So what I've done is I've gone back to the experiences of my inner child and the experiences she had to make sure that she feels safe. I know this is a bit bonkers, right? It is crazy when I think about it, but this is how the brain works. Yeah, I've had to go back, reconnect with her, make sure she feels safe. And then I've had to also connect with the young woman it is that I was as well and the woman I am now and my higher self. So there are the four layers that I work work for in terms of, you know, time travel, emotional travel. What we do is we go back and we connect through the different layers to nurture her so she feels safe, so that she feels loved and cared for. And that means that you are all working from the same emotional level you're not stuck in a past traumatic event that is keeping you stuck it's it's basically the creation of the loop that is preventing you from moving forward so let's have a look at what i've got here so when i was a child about one and a half i was taken into care my um my parents were both alcoholics couldn't look after me you know so i was taken into care for um neglect now i experienced emotional and traumatic abuse when i went into that first home so my um, first memories are about now whether this is true or not whether it's accurate or not is a different matter but this is how i experience it in the here and now is that it is true that i was addicted to valium at about one and a half because the carers were using it to subdue the kids in the children's home so I was a very young addict <laughs> and I also remember being locked in a cupboard so whether that's a wardrobe a cupboard whatever that is so I carry that emotional trauma scar baggage and when I step into a bit of fear, a bit of resistance, what generally happens for me is that will start to play out again. So I have to go back and connect with myself as a child so I can love myself, comfort myself, nurture myself so I feel emotionally safe and secure. If I don't bring her along, what happens is, is that I just freeze i become emotionally 
stuff. So for me, it's about connecting back to the rawness of the emotion to help me navigate what it is that I'm experiencing in the here and now because the ego, the subconscious is trying to keep me safe and is trying to, well, that's all it's trying to do. It's trying to keep me safe and it's stopping me from getting hurt and having similar experiences. So, yeah, addicted to Valium, that was really my first, uh, first memory. That's where I get stuck. It's that sense of being caged in, being, being locked in. Yeah, so it starts to um, show back up form. It starts to play out again for me. It stops me from taking action. It keeps me feeling um, paralyzed. So what I do is, because I recognize that within myself, is that I use journaling as a way to release that emotional discharge and really get under the skin of and understand what is playing out in the here and now. So I can get a fresh perspective, a new perspective. I'm going to talk more about how you can clear negative emotions, how you can connect the dots between your past experiences and what is playing out now. Well, that's why some people are going fishing. Women are going fishing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so surprised about women going fishing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Yeah, I'll talk about it more in the toolbox in terms of how you can navigate and use conscious coaching and self-coaching to navigate strong emotions that are blocking you. What I'll do is I'll leave the link below so you can grab yourself a copy of the conscious coaching toolbox if you use the code save 230 you will save 230 pounds because i'm currently in pre-launch at the moment it won't be increasing until i actually do launch the toolbox along with the book which will be in december of this year <laughs> so i've got to get on it <laughs> Yes, yeah, so do that now. It could be the best decision that you that you make. Okay, so what else have I been up to then? So here's me saying I haven't done very much when actually I did this piece of work in a yesterday, in a day. So it just shows the illusion the mind will create if you let it, if you um, don't keep it in check. It can play havoc. <laughs> yeah, so I also created a video of the 32 ways that the Conscious Coaching Toolbox has helped me personally. And that honestly blew me away somewhat that I have created this series of tools that you can use to navigate what is keeping you stuck in your life. So it was a real proud moment that wow i've actually created this and women can leverage their wholeness that they can you know come from a place of themselves without feeling bad or without feeling guilty about the experiences it is that they've had along the way on their journey so it's about connecting you as a whole to yourself releasing those blocks so i was just stunned by how many positives there are and that was just what was in my head yesterday those 32 benefits i've also created a uh, slideshow of be more wolf the 32 benefits to coaching and self-coaching conscious coaching and the toolbox so i'm also going to pop that below this video as well so you can get access to it and have a look at some of the incredible benefits it is that i have personally experienced since bringing this toolbox together
Yeah, just going back to me having that thought about, this is another loop, you see, me having that thought about, oh, God, I haven't really done that much this week. But this is just what I did yesterday. So I know where that trigger comes from. That trigger comes from the underlying unmet need of safety and security which drives me to push myself extremely hard when it is totally unnecessary as evidence when I'm reflecting on what it is that I have done over this week so I'm going to talk about that more in the book as well about how you can find what those triggers are how to recognize them acknowledge them and move past them and to be able to take a to take a breathing space create a new way of seeing yourself a new perspective a new way of doing things thank you for joining me this week i look forward to seeing what i'm going to do this week in terms of the book <laughs> lots of ideas lots of research i need to get some uh, testimonials that's one of the things i am going to be working from from the women who are from the women who are doing the conscious coaching ritual at the moment so i'm going to be sharing that with you i might bring some of them on to do an interview with them as well got any questions you know pop them below this video i'll be more than happy to answer them for you any thoughts any questions around conscious coaching any questions around increased um, productivity helping to navigate challenging emotions and there's a cat coming up this is where i'm looking for it all navigating challenging emotions self-coaching anything that i covered that you're not sure about just pop the question below i will be more than happy to answer answer it for you oh hello oh hello little one so i'm back in the cat cats of course oh, oh. 